We live in a fantasy world now. Reality has been destroyed. This is the time that we really need to pay attention. The probabilities are overwhelmingly on gold's side. That is the best environment to see gold increase its value. Welcome to Palisades Gold Radio. I'm your host, Tom Bodrovix. Joining me today is Kevin Wadsworth and Patrick Karim. They've teamed up to create a, a new website, northstarbadcharts.com. They're two of our, our favorite chartists to have on the, the program, and uh, I, hope you like in, uh, I hope you like the charts that we have to go over. Welcome, guys. Hey, how you doing? Hi, Tom. Hey. Thanks, to have, <laughs> thanks to have both of you back. So... <laughs> We're, we're going to start here um, with uh, a couple charts. Let's start with the U.S. dollar. Kev, this is your, your chart. Um, so is the U.S. dollar doomed? Yeah, is it doomed or is it domed? Uh, um, well, this is a chart that I've been following for quite a lot of years. Anybody that follows me on, on Twitter will, will, will know that. And it shows quite clearly where we've seen dollar cycle lows and dollar cycle highs over the past um, 30, 40 years going back to the uh, 1980s and in fact further back if you take the chart further back than that. So we're, um, we've are we seen a dollar cycle high sort of around about the sort of period around about 2016, 2017 and it's been declining slowly since then and it's been sort of um, characterised by this dome uh, top formation where we've seen three touches on this on this dome formation and it's begun to, to fall, it has quite significantly fallen away from the highs now and uh, um, we're progressing gradually down towards the dollar cycle low, but um, there's a certain amount of debate amongst technical analysts around um, what you know exactly where this is going to progress from this point onwards. With some of the analyst community sort of expecting the US dollar to move upwards, and uh, and and another another camp where um, analysts are expecting the, the dollar to move down. So, as always, there's some uh, some sort of debate around around what uh, what the future holds. But my personal view is um, that the the dollar is likely to show weakness uh, going forwards, um, not least because of the amount of debt held by the US, of course. Uh, which which won't help, but um, so I'm looking to see the dollar cycle bottoming uh, during the period sh period shown here. Um, but it's uh, as always a case of following the chart, letting the chart um, tell us what's going to happen, rather than having any uh, really strongly held views one way or the other. Um, at the moment, the evidence points to a downward trend, and as long as the evidence points that way, then uh, that'll remain my forecast. So uh, it's one to watch, um, and uh, certainly going to be interesting over the next uh, next couple of years watching it uh, progress. So, Kevin, is there anything you want to point out um, specifically here on the chart, like these these zones in the in the stoichi stoichiometric uh, indicator here? Yeah, so the, the, the stochastic indicator there, it's, um, it's showing periods, I've highlighted periods where um, during dollar cyclical lows, the stochastic indicator stays low for a long period of time. So um, what I'm indicating there on the right-hand side is that although the, the indicator has just picked up and has started to, to move in an upwards direction, it should just perform as it has done during those periods in the, um, in the early to mid-2000s, where despite um, initial upticks in the, in the indicator, um, it really just continued in a, in a general sideways drift for uh, two or three years, really. Um, so if we're going to see the dollar cycle um, bottoming at, the, at this point, we need to see the stochastic indicator remaining low and the triple exponential indicator remaining uh, below zero. So that's a, a good um, good sort of technical indicator to watch to, to tell us that we're still on track and uh, things are progressing as per the forecast. Perfect. All right, Patrick, you have a, a dollar chart as well here. Yeah, so sometimes I do like uh, going on the daily chart. Uh, I know there's more noise. I know that there's a, a daily chart, smaller time frames have, uh, they're less reliable than the higher time frame charts. But when you know that the higher time frame chart, like Kevin showed, that uh, the cycle is pointing us that we haven't hit a low yet in the, for the US dollar. So it adds weight of evidence. When you're looking at this chart, you could create a, um, some type of bias that that higher macro wave could at any time or trend swoop down any counter trend rallies within that chart. So that's what we've been having in, uh, since uh, the US dollar has started rallying. And uh, a little while back, it was so funny because Kev, did a chart, I think at the almost same time, and we both saw that there was this uh, ascend, ascending, broadening uh, wedge. And, uh, and often that resolution of those lines is a resolution to the downside. So right now it's going back up. Is it going to go test that upper line? Well, that's when I look at the, a confluence of uh, resistance. Where could it 
would be susceptible of turning back down. So we have the still declining 200 day moving average, putting pressure. We're below the 50 day moving average. So that could create some uh, resistance. And I have that, that dotted line, which I call the wall. So it's previous resistance, now, uh, previous support, now turn resistance. So that's, if it would turn around, that's probably an area where it would turn around. And that chart, I think it's from April 30th. So I, we know today that uh, already uh, gold has exploded and silver and the US dollar is starting to go down. So we could already starting to, to, to turning, that corner's already started to turn. And uh, that break of that uh, lower boundary, then that's a uh, Canadian timber <laughs> and uh, potentially going down to 87. And 87 is below some important, uh, it's bringing us close to um, important uh, breakdown lines on higher time frames. But uh, man, that's... Um, yeah, in fact, I think it's 88.25 is the, if, if my memory serves me correctly, yeah, exactly. 88.25 is the, the key number that we need to get down below um, yeah. in terms of the US dollar cycle. It's important from a three-year cycle point of view um, and will help to settle the debate um, that's, that's raging around the US dollar at the moment. Exactly. That has to break down. So that measure moves and create pressure. And that level that Kev meant, mentioned, if we're able to close below that on a monthly or quarterly candle, that's going to be a, a nail in the coffin there. But until then, uh, this is the evidence we have. So we, we have to, to, to let that play out. And just as you were mentioning here, Patrick, uh, we're recording on the afternoon of May 6th and um, gold and, and silver both gold broke over eighteen hundred dollars today and uh silver just just getting below that 2750 uh mark which is also very important we'll talk about that later <clears throat> uh so we have a more zoomed out um and inflation adjusted chart for the dollar here right patrick yeah i, I went down this rabbit hole and i asked often kevin like uh, hey kev could i uh, inflation adjust uh, uh, a currency but it doesn't make sense to do that right but I still did it anyways. Sometimes I, I do some charts and they don't make sense. I move on. But when I did it, I remember sometimes often I, I looked and some guys posted that the purchasing power of the, the US or US dollar. And it's that chart where in the background, it's like a US dollar and it keeps going down. And it looks exactly like the US, the DXY, the US dollar index adjusted for inflation. And the, the key, the key uh, takeaway from this chart is even in the 1970s there, or late 70s, towards the end of the bull market uh, for gold and silver, when the US dollar was going up, sensing higher rates and people would go, go in the US dollar, even if nominally it went much higher than the previous highs in the late 60s, when you adjust for inflation, yeah, it really didn't even come close to making a new highs. So it's always relative, like it's, a, that's why I came to the conclusion that the, the DXY, it's an illusion, but you're, because your real purchasing power, even if the DXY skyrockets, you still won't be able to buy as much milk at the at the grocery store. You still won't be able to buy, able to buy a whole bunch of stuff because once you adjust for that super high inflation that they had back in the 80s uh, or late 70s, it, it, it just lowers that purchasing power. And just with this chart, I've identified when its distance from its uh, three-year moving average breaks down. So that's kind of like a... Um, another type of a momentum indicator when it it breaks down i identified the beginning of uh, cycles defined by by that uh, that trigger and it did a 15 year cycle from 85 or 17 year cycle to 2002 all the way to 2021 and right now i can't wait to see this chart how it's going to close and we have it one two three four five point uh, trend lines man if that breaks down the distance from its uh, three moving average I'm expecting the US dollar inflation adjusted to lose another 50% in the next 15 years. So yeah, the, there could be a spike, let's say when uh, uh, Kevin's dome, it hits the bottom of the bowl and goes back up and nominally, maybe it's gonna go higher, let's say at 120 or whatever, 140 higher than its previous high. But in, there's gonna be so much inflation that it doesn't matter that the DXY goes up because uh, when adjusted for inflation is gonna be rock, rock, rock bottom. Excellent. All right. Sorry, <laughs> something something we've talked about uh, several times on the on the show in the last or recently, um, you know, with with Lynn Alden with David Brady is the the confluence of real yields to the gold price. So, Kevin, this is one of your charts. Walk us through it, please. 
Yeah, it is. Yeah, it, it goes back uh, to 2010 and it just uh, sort of focuses in on what's been going on with real yields. And also I've overlaid the um, US national debt on there, or at least the part of the national debt that we uh, we commonly t- talk about. And obviously a lot of uh, lot of debt on top of this, but um, you can see how we've moved from 14 trillion of debt to 17 trillion, 19 trillion, 20 trillion. It's going up sort of fairly st- steadily, um, a couple of trillion every year. Uh, Every few years, and until we got to uh, more more recent times, of course, and you get to point uh, six there, twenty three trillion, and then all of a sudden, in a, in an equal space of time, instead of going uh, increasing the national debt by a couple of trillion, it's jumped from twenty three trillion to to thirty trillion. Um, of course, that's uh, accelerating even more now with all of the after effects of. Um, the COVID crisis and uh, the amount of money that's being um, used to shore up the economy and uh, of course Joe Biden's recent announcements over uh, infrastructure spending plans so it's all sort of um, sort of feeds into the um, expectation that uh, I think many of us have had for a long time that we're in a sort of some kind of final death spiral thing developing here really where the weight of uh, the sheer burden of um, the nominal value of the national debt is going to lead to, to some um, some problems that I, ha- I have, for one, haven't been able to work out how uh, how they can be resolved. Because, of course, in the 1970s, when uh, we had high inflation, um, we also had uh, Paul Volcker coming along and uh, putting interest rates up to, to high levels uh, to, to kill inflation. But... Um, of course, we can't do that now as, as debt increases and inflation eventually begins to, to break out. Um, the ability to increase interest rates just, just isn't isn't there. How can you have interest rates raised to 5%, 10% or probably even 3% uh, when you've got debt steadily increasing towards 40, 50 trillion um, and the, you know, um, national output isn't isn't sufficient to cover the debt so you know it's a it's an it's an equation that you can't m- make balance the only way really is through high, is, is to allow very high inflation i say allow because i suppose once it gets beyond a certain point it uh, it gains a, a momentum all of its own which is um you know we've seen that play out in weimar germany and um south american countries of course and various other places so it's, it's really not something you, you you want to get into but um so yeah uh, this is a 30-year yields and they're um they're starting to fall away into negative territory again and the same thing's happening with the shorter um duration debt as well so um i i would expect you know strongly suspect that the um uh, the central banks federal reserve would want to keep um uh interest rates low and 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 cap yields which of course means real yields are going to fall away even further as and when inflationary forces um start to start to appear you know if inflation is is rising towards three four percent and and more um you know then you're going to see that the real rate um drops away uh, because of the, because of that inflation so um it's it's not a good it's not a pretty picture um and it, it leads me to think that developing over the next few years is going to be a real real sort of crisis the likes of which we haven't seen in in our lifetimes very cheery i'm afraid <laughs> I was <gonna> say that. <laughs> that's not it's not uh, it's not nice stuff but there you go absolutely <clears throat> uh pat you also have a a real rates versus gold chart here yeah well like kev's chart the first time i saw it there is when he overlaid the 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 debt amounts like then we saw for for a lot of years uh, like it was uh, 15 17 19 and then we're starting to really like uh, it's starting to crescendo like downwards exponentially man that that's a uh, kind of mind mind boggling there what uh what that's going to provoke and uh yeah for these charts that's another like sometimes often i know we like uh, kev was uh, looking at real rates uh, higher on the curve but on the shallow end, I did the Fed fund rate minus the inflation rate to get the, the real rates, but like the overnight rates, the, the shorter term of the curve. But there's phases where gold goes up at the same same time as those real rates. But these charts are kind of maybe slightly misguiding because I know with other charts I've done that uh, the US dollar was tanking at those moments. So gold... Uh, has a multiple of drivers aggregated or not? They they sometimes some take over the the lead of over others, but if somebody is just looking at a chart and says, "Oh, real rates are going up," 
and a gold has to tank and he takes a position uh, to short gold, he's got to be careful because there's more elements than that. And this chart proves, you could see in the 60s, late 60s, gold went up with the real rates at the same time. And it did the same thing in 2004, all the way to 2006. And the, the lesson to that is extreme negative real rates when everybody thinks it's the end of the world and we're going to go to minus 10% real rates, that's a contrarian uh, area where we could think that uh, it could be the end of the bull market. And each one of those important spikes in the, in the gold gold tops, it was a single with just real rates just dropping rock bottom, minus 5% in the 75 or minus 5% in 80, 81. And uh, 2011, rock bottom, uh, minus 3.5, same thing uh, a little earlier. So we got to be, hopefully now we haven't tanked in the real rates. Real rates, I hope maybe if they go up, gold goes up with it. And then later on, when we have a parabolic melt up in gold with the real rates just crashing down, end of the world type scenario, that's when we know we're in a type of end game situation there where uh, gold's going to go crazy up. Perfect. Now we have uh, gold versus the Dow. Okay. Always a, a good racial chart, U.S. equities versus gold to see where the capital flows are, are going. You, you can't go wrong with that. And I like to overlay like the PNF chart so to remove time noise. So the time scale at the bottom is practically uh, meaningless going forward. It's just when there's sufficient price action, uh, reversal, then it adds a new column of X's or O's. But what the takeaway is, look at that line. In 1929, so when the Dow severely outperformed gold in 1929, that the beginning, the, we're starting to set that trend line. In the 1972, uh, US equities had uh, outperformed gold right before uh, the inflation cycle and gold started outperforming uh, US equities. That was another, we're starting to set those low watermarks. And right now we have, for a fourth time, we're below that line. So in March, 2020, that's when the US equities were outperforming gold to, to their greatest extent. So if you want to look at this from a risk to reward, a situational analysis, am I in a, at the end of a gold cycle versus US equities or at the beginning? This chart is clear, clear, clear that you're at the beginning. Yes, maybe the US equities could go up at the same time as gold, or maybe this could dip a little bit more below that line, but you have a lot more reward going up. I don't know how high it's going to go. So I have those trend lines. If they break above that wake up, that first wake up trend line, uh, if it breaks up above, then we're going to go test maybe that other one, uh, that those floodgates. But uh, for me, the, the, the risk, the asymmetric risk in favor of hard assets, gold, and uh, the rest of the precious metals, commodities, is so much in favor of, US, uh, of uh, gold versus U.S. equities that um, it's, it's a no-brainer right now. If you're holding U.S. equities, uh, you're in fear of missing out mode, and you're really uh, playing with fire because even if you could squeeze out another 10%, 20% in U.S. equities, it's uh, they're going to start underperforming gold uh, really soon. Yeah, it seems to be just another you know piece of or, or piece to add to the weight of evidence of of gold being a, a good buy or gold and commodities being a good buy at this point, right, Pat? Uh, for me, it doesn't get clearer clearer than this. Our two hundred year chart or one hundred twenty year chart. There's that's a lot of data. Mm -hmm. So speaking of gold, we have, we're going to move on to gold now, and we have a couple of charts to go through here. 40-year uh, gold chart, and I just, this is a semestrial uh, log chart, so six-month candles, reduce a maximum of noise, so less whipsaws, and every time, so at the stock at the bottom, every time that fast signal, that's, that thinner wire crossed the 80 line, uh, gold had a strong, strong move. So in the 70s, it had explosive moves after going, hitting that, like what I call a bull zone. When I'm above that 80 line, it's actually a bull zone. So, and uh, in 2004, it had that same single, but it was a more of a slow grind going up. So right now, I don't know wh which one we're going to have. Maybe a more 2004 type of uh, ascent going back upward, uh, going upwards for gold. But that single has never given a false single especially when the hard wire after also managed to go above uh, the 80 line. It's, uh, th those are super, super, super uh, important signals there. So add that to the weight of evidence. You know that you have the long-term huge signals, you're above a wall. So previous uh, resistance now turned support. 
I think at 1675, we're, we're above that. We tested it in the first Q1 and the Q2 of this year. We've tested 1675 to the T. Now we're going back up uh, above 1800. So um, all those wall of worries, when you look at this chart, for me, it's still super early and you're, eating, you're, you're even at a good risk to reward because you've just busted above that uh, semestral defined resistance and you've tested it and now you're just ready to turn back upwards. Excellent. So you kind of had a, a, a three-piece uh, chart set here for gold. Um, and this is this is another one of, of yours, Patrick. Yeah. So I, I just flip the indicator at the bottom to, to, to keep the chart clean and just give a different feel. At the bottom is the distance from the 30 period uh, of a six six month candle. So that's the distance from the 15 year moving average, super, super uh, slow moving average. And you see how low we are, the further high you are, the further you are away from that 15 year moving average, the more you're in fear of missing out, the more, uh, oh, everybody's talking about gold. Right now, you're just at the beginning. So you're above zero, you're above the 15 year moving average. And until we hit that first zone, 162% above that uh, 15 year moving average, don't even think about taking profits. And after that, if we're the construct is still nice, then maybe we're going to go and uh, be able to take some profits at when we're stretched 257% away from that 15-year uh, moving average. And the third one, exceptional, uh, probably end end of decade, uh, hyperinflation type of melt up of gold. We're going to be able, we're going to be stretched just like in the late 70s. But for now, another reassurance, you're just, 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 just at the beginning. You're not stretched away from that 15-year moving average. Uh, so uh, another evidence, low, low risk, high reward. So the reward is the potential to go all the way to that first profit, profit zone. Uh, yeah, that's pretty uh, much a no-brainer there. Perfect. Maybe we shouldn't believe people say no-brainer, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> how do they know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, scratch that. Just build the evidence, guys. Okay, and this chart, if I may, uh, Tom, it's uh, another one of my, so I inflation adjusted a ratio, like technical guys are gonna tell me it's a, a big no-no. So, but this, I just wanted to see how it, it smoothed out the, those, those arcs. And uh, I just wanna see how pa patterns repeat. So this is the silver versus the log, the Dow uh, log inflation ratio. And in 1948 to 1983, it had a, a full cycle. So from an arc cycle, so from top all the way to the bottom, touch a few times on, on the right side and then exploded up. The next cycle I had 89 to 2012, same thing, almost a perfect arc. Uh, these are two weeks, uh, two week candles. So we had a small dip in 2008, right below that arc. But look at those multiple, multiple touches of that arc. Super smooth, super. Uh, for me, that's a high. The more touches of that arc, the higher the confidence I have in that arc fulfilling its prophecy that its angle of entry is going to be the angle of exit. And then 2012, it went all the way up to the top of the arc. And you got to note, it's not to the top of the previous ratio where it was. These arcs, I'm zooming in. So that high is just a high of the arc um, to the left side. It's not the, it's not the 1983 uh, high. Mm -hmm. So now we're going down and this is the last arc I identified the 2013 draw the down into the, the bottom. And I did this chart uh, April 22nd. And I just noticed that two week, those two week candles, it just started turning, uh, it started bouncing upwards. And I don't, I don't, I could probably refresh it today. I'm pretty sure with the action, especially that we've seen today that it's already bouncing upwards. And that's the second bounce on the right hemisphere. So for me, that confirms the, the arc. So if you, you bring that to how it was situated in 1970 or 71, how it was situated in, nine, in 2004, we're right super, super low in the bottom of the arc. Man, it, it's insane. When I saw that, I said, that, that thing's gonna explode upwards. The target is at those 2013 highs of that arc. And uh, man, so even silver now should drastically, drastically outperform uh, the Dow go, going forward. Something uh, that we've all spoken about on the on the show before, you guys, is is the mid cycle lows. So, can you give us a reminder of of when those are and the kind of the reason for them? Kev, yep. So, if you're talking about <clears throat> talking about gold, um, so gold has a, a roughly eight year cycle and a sixteen year cycle. Um, so sort of roughly speaking sort of 2000 to 2008 2008 to 2016 then through to 2024 so 
the uh, next sort of eight year cycle low that we're looking at is depends just how you measure it because the, the lows occur just sometimes a little bit either side of you know where the sort of mathematical midpoint is but I'm, I'm sort of focusing on 2023 2024 as being the uh, likely uh, or most likely sort of period for for gold to reach its eight year cycle low um so it'll um <laughs> we've got some we've probably got some quite exciting times coming up just now but uh, i think it's uh, it's going to slide away and uh, drop into that 2023 low so there's a lot to look at with uh, with gold but yeah it, it does follow that um that cyclical behavior um the, the 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 cycles by the way are measured from low to low not high to high some of the questions we get asked quite often um is how you sort of place the cyclical lows and it's it's measured from measured from the from the low points the actual high point of each cycle can occur um very soon after the low point and then you can spend a long time going down or you can spend a long time going up and then dip down very suddenly and briefly into the uh, into the eight-year cycle low, which is of course what happened in 2008. Gold just rose from 2000 to sort of it, for that eight-year cycle, it, it was sort of rising most of the time and then dropped very sharply into the into the cyclical low. Yeah, that's that's the reason I was asking that is because I was looking at the the date here for 2024 arc yeah. and and thinking we should we should cover that. Anything to yeah. add there, Pat? Yeah, well. Okay, so the the arc it's probably going to complete a little before twenty twenty four. So usually it's the uh, where it enters uh, at that distance from the the apex or the, the corner of the arc. It should exit close towards that. So if I'm if I'm correlating this correctly, that we think in twenty let's say November twenty twenty four, there's going to be a gold a sharp drop for silver or gold. This actually, if it peaks in twenty twenty three, if you draw a line upwards, if that ratio of silver peaks versus the Dow in twenty twenty three. Uh, that could that could also coincide with a peak in silver, and after that, that the arc could break down where um, where we have that mid cycle uh, low down twenty twenty four. But uh, you got to be careful a bit with this because this is a silver to Dow, so they could mm -hmm. both be uh, going down together in twenty twenty four. So I, I'm not quite sure about the cycles of the U.S. equities if they match with uh, precious metals right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just something um, but, uh, to to think about. But yeah, that's um, or or just something to add on that. Uh, that timing of of the the mid cycle low 2024 there always consider those cycles in the back of your head to see if it matches to give confidence in uh, how your bias was when you drew uh, your charts there understanding the cycles really helps uh, removing a paralysis analysis mm -hmm. or analysis by paralysis mm -hmm. all right <laughs> paralysis by analysis thank you it's my french <laughs> i'm, uh, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Anything else to add there, Kev? No, no, we'll, we'll go on to the next slide, I think. Thanks, Tom. Okay. Which is yours. It is, it is. Yeah, so this is the um, the silver cup and handle that uh, quite a lot of analysts have, have pointed out over the last few, well, years, in fact. Um, so the, you can see the cup has formed there. Uh, or the or the arc as I often refer to it, and it's a uh, apart from a little bit of a, a full spike down in the early 1980s. There, it's a it's a nicely formed uh, arc formation, and uh, it's contained the the silver price all the way through into the sort of early 2000s. There, where silver had a a double top with um, with with a second rise to to fifty dollars. Ever since then, um, it, you know, of course, the, the the price dropped very sharply, all the way back down to uh, fourteen dollars or less, um, and it started rising again. And it's um, it's carving out a, a handle to the to the cup, um, and as it happens, the the handle to that cup, um, they're often drawn with horizontal uh, trend. Uh, support and resistance lines uh, that's what i've shown there with the with the dashed lines um, so we have a, we have a handle with two dashed lines, but also at the same time it's forming a, a cup formation as well. So there's some it, it sort of demonstrates that there's very often more than one way of visualizing a chart uh, a chart formation or a chart pattern. But uh, in in this case, of course, they're both bullish patterns. You've got a descending sort of um, wedge formation with the with the dashed lines, um, and you've got the um, and the, you've got the smaller arc. Uh, formation which is guiding the silver price up not only that of course but you've got a bull flag forming just below the dashed line uh, at around about the 27 dollar breakout level uh, 27 27 and a half something like that so um, we're breaking through that level now which is which is very bullish um, and indicative of the fact that we're going to see that cup pattern complete um, which takes us back to back to 50 dollars again which would be the third 
Uh, of course, it'd be the third attempt at the $50 breakout. Really interesting to see what happens at that point, because I think we're going to be in that position later on this year, probably in um, two to three months' time, testing $50. And um, quite a lot of the markets are synchronising at the moment. We've got very stretched conditions in equities, um, and you know we're, we're seeing um, cryptocurrencies reaching the... Um, peak of their uh, their bull cycle in the same time frame <clears throat> so it does look to me as though we're going to see a synchronized um yeah crash <laughs> as, <laughs> as things come down again um it, it's uh it, that's how it's looking to me at the moment but as i say it'll be very interesting just to see how silver price reacts at that 50 dollar level do we burst through and have some kind of huge spike to the upside before it all comes cr- crashing down um possibly possibly um We'll see nearer the time, of course. If if we see a bull flag building below the fifty dollar level, um, some kind of bullish formation, uh, either just below or just above the fifty dollar level, then that'll make me think that perhaps we are going to you know rocket higher towards uh, towards higher targets, perhaps into the into the seventies. Um, but that remains to be seen. Let's get let's get to fifty dollars first. Absolutely. So, what are you using or or trying to show with the tricks indicator there, Kev? Well, you zoom out to these sort of long time frames and you can take a historical perspective on these things. And what you can see pretty clearly, I think, on that chart is that as long as the, tri- the triple exponential indicator um, is above zero and, and rising, um, then um, price behaves in a bullish, a bullish fashion. Um, the turning points are sort of below zero. Um, so you can see there in sort of 2014, 15, 16 sort of time frame, the, the indicator was below zero um, and began to turn upwards. But it's not really until you get across that zero line and continue rising that you start to have a lot more confidence that we're sort of in a historical um, sort of bull phase. Um, and it's, it's another, as Pat was talking about earlier on, you know, you're building up um, weight of evidence and the weight of evidence is in the uh, bullish chart formations, which are well documented, you know, sort of bull flags, bullish pennants cup and handle formations, all those kind of things. Um, but um, also uh, looking at how the uh, technical indicators are behaving at the same time can just give you that extra um, bit of confidence that uh, what you're seeing in the, in the technical price chart is being supported by the uh, technical indicators as well. So the triple exponential, as I say, if it's above zero and rising, then it's in, um, it's in bull mode, if you like. And, and how did you uh, come to the target for that hundred dollar range there. Yeah, I'm glad you asked that. So <clears throat> the, um, the 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 typical target for a, for a cup uh, pattern is is quite simple, really. If you have a look in the um, in the charting textbooks, it's really just the depth of the cup added to the breakout um, point. So the cup is very broadly speaking fifty dollars deep. Okay, it's not quite fifty dollars. It started around about uh, three and a half four dollars, but um, that's neither here nor there really when you when you're talking about the fifty dollars. So. Um, so it's roughly fifty dollars deep. Uh, its breakout level is going to be at fifty dollars. Um, so it takes you close to, close to a hundred dollars. So that's your um, that's your large cup um, eventual target. And you can do the same with the smaller cup as well. Um, so the smaller cup starts at fourteen dollars and ends at fifty dollars. So you're talking about thirty six dollars there. So thirty six added on to fifty. Um, so that's uh, eighty six dollars. So that's another sort of resistance point as you're rising towards the hundred dollars. So um, $86 would be a point where you would expect price to, to start to pause and consolidate for a while. Excellent. So Pat, one of your silver charts here as well. All right, well, uh, okay, another semestrial uh, log chart for, for silver, reduced noise, six months uh, closes. And, and this one, man, uh, long-term silver and I have a generational, I don't know when it's more than 30 years, what do you call that? Maybe more than a, almost a couple of generations. I have a descending pivot line that's going across that served as support in 2009 when we had this, when the huge silver pullback. And then when it ultimately fell in 2012 or 13, then we went in the current consolidation we had uh, since then. And now we're just back above. It's, it's insane. So uh, at this stage right now, crossing over that line, um, I like looking at indicators and then seeing how the price action previously behaved around that situation, just to give me a guideline of how much horsepower or how much fuel I have in the move. 
And uh, if we do a conservative move, I know some, uh, if let's say we're end game, we could have a move more like the 1970s, more condensed and higher up. But let's say we have a slow grinding move uh, like we had since 2000, let's say five, all the way to 12 or 13. Um, from where we are right now, and that's going to give me with the angle of ascent, a target of uh, on a six months close of 120 for two for the end of the 2026. And, but that's a six months close. So if on the smaller time frames, we know silver, it's a uh, parabolic uh, melt up abilities. So it could easily on the monthly or quarterly or weekly or daily chart spike up way higher than that, that crazy highs. But after that, it's going to be a wick. People are going to sell by the end of that six months, by the end of uh, 2026 or 20, wherever that timing is, it could close uh, at least at 120. So uh, far off, but uh, it's, People often, oh, Patrick, your target, what? It's not 800 anymore. <laughs> it's it, people, the takeaway, sh I'm shooting, but the direction is uh, the targets are always higher up. Like Kevin noticed, uh, there's going to be resistance at 80 based on that that cup target or the, the handle target. The, the cup target's 100. That's going to be another resistance. It's all weight of evidence you have to like calculate. But the, the takeaway is they're all up. There's no targets uh, down, like we're above moving averages, important moving averages. So guys, don't worry about these absolute targets. Like I could be off by years, who knows? Like, but the important thing as we get closer to those targets, start thinking and looking, okay, am I stretched? Uh, and that's why I have always the distance from that uh, 12 period moving average. So that's 12 times six months. So that's, if my math is right, that's a distance from the silver six year moving average. And right now it's behaving the same way it did prior to that breakout uh, back in 2005. So it had two years above that, uh, that six-year moving average, and then it started uh, extending away. So it, the more you're getting away from that moving average, the more you're creating momentum, you're outpacing it more and more. So that's that's what you want to see. And right now, if we close June and distancing, uh, silver can distance itself even more from that six-year moving average. Man, it's the, the setup is for a crazy, uh, even more 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 intense move ups. Yeah, it's going to be volatile on the smart time frames. But overall, when you zoom out, it's a pretty straight line, man. So once that trend is set, uh, we're, still, we're still early. And um, the, all those wall of worries, well, for those daily traders over leverage, they're going to miss out on the big, big move. That's the, this move that's happening over, over the decade. It's interesting that you brought that up, Patrick, about, about basically projecting above um, all-time highs, because that's something you know, from an outsider looking at technical analysis that I've always wondered is how you can possibly chart anything when we're above these all-time highs where you have no historical information. Well, you don't, you do have the historical information is like what Kev says, it's in the textbook, it's previous uh, crunching of supply and demand, the tight patterns, all, all the supply is gone. All the people who bought at higher prices over 10 years, they, they moved on to crypto, they moved on to something else or they, they bailed out. And it's just the, it's like, like Kevin says the word, the mathematics, it's like, I never thought about using that vocabulary, but he's so right. It's, uh, I, know, I don't know if the mad scientist puts some formula behind supply and demand and the, the counter effect of it and the price movement, but man, these patterns with these measure moves on these patterns in these classical charting books, they, they repeat often, 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 often. So you got you to gotta respect that. So even if you don't understand the math, like some people don't understand the, the rules of gravity, well, it's there, man. It's impacting you whether you understand it or not. And uh, so, yeah, that's, so that, that's how we come up with a crazy uh, triple-digit silver targets. <laughs> <laughs> Kev, anything to add there? No, I mean, Patrick's absolutely right. And of course, when you do get above uh, all-time highs, then your charting techniques do need to change because, um, you know, you're, you're, in, you're in uncharted territory, quite literally. Um, but there are techniques and methods. And the important thing at that point is to um, be, it's not, it's not just the price, it's the time. And you need to get the timing of the turn because when you're in new, new all-time high territory, then at some point, of course, um, you know, that, that run is going to end and you, you're going to start seeing the prices coming down. So you need to be um, looking out for the signals and aware of what those signals are so that you can exit your uh, positions at, at the right point. Perfect. And 
Yeah, just to bring, that's why knowing the psychoanalysis, the, the drop in 2024, that's why when I draw at the bottom of the stock, I, I'm imagining that it's going to start slowing down and coming down uh, towards 2024, 2023. Um, you have to prepare your, your brain, you know, yes, there will be a drawdown. So don't, because after that, when the price goes crazy right before the turn, everybody thinks it's going to the moon, right? Everybody wants gold, everybody wants silver. So cycle analysis is so useful for that there, especially on the big time frames, to start like reasoning, okay, let's look, uh, the run's due for a big pullback and uh, just uh, for your brain to digest that there when you, you, you look at your, your charts. Perfect. All right, we're gonna move on to copper. Yeah, so base metals, it's not all about the precious metals, is it? Um, I mentioned earlier on about Joe Biden's infrastructure plan, and it's the same um, in many parts of the world, across Europe as well. I think governments are going to be looking to um, to spend uh, quite big to stimulate economies and to um, to get industry um, going again after, after what we've all been through, and that's going to have a, a huge effect, of course, and um, supply and demand um, equations pretty much um, guarantee that there's going to be a, at least a, a, a temporary uh, rise in, in um, inflationary pressures in base metals and in, in commodities generally. I say temporary, um, eventually it won't be temporary, but um, this particular surge may, may be relatively short-lived. But you can see on the copper chart there are some very clearly um, defined uh, technical charting patterns, and I, you know, I'm, I really do quite like this. Um, <laughs> I've got to apologise for the dog barking in the background. The joys of uh, broadcasting from home. Um, yeah, so we've got, we've got these um, arc formations, which um, which show up across different um, uh, markets, of course. And the latest ones guiding price upwards, and we've seen a really huge move, of course, a doubling of copper prices. I mean, we're heading towards five dollars now, aren't we? I think so. Um, it, we may well see the copper price um, bursting out of the top of that arc. It's a little bit early, though. Um, I think the arc still has more of a job to to play in the, in this. And interestingly, we've got an apex of a triangle um, coming up actually in the next uh, year or so. So I'm sort of envisaging this surge to continue for a little while longer, and for copper price to come back. And it's quite likely to be attracted either to the horizontal resistance zone. Um, that you can see marked in, in red there, or um, po quite possibly all the way back down to uh, to the apex of the, um, of the of the triangle there, which uh, I can't quite see on my screen what that equates to in, in price, but um, it'd be quite a big drop there. We've got uh, yeah, oh, two seventy five, I think, right? three dollars, isn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and that of course would give another touch on the uh, on the another touch point on the arc uh, pattern there, which would. Um, from a technical charting perspective, be you know really really good um, and be an absolutely perfect point to to re-enter the um, re-enter the market if you're uh, if you're you're sort of tra trading in uh, in copper plays. So yeah, good stuff. Perfect. We and were, uranium. Yeah, 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 we were asked to do uranium, so here we go. Yeah, yeah, another uh, another commodity, uh, and going to be a very important commodity going forwards as well. Of course, um, with the clean energy. Um, sort of bills and clean clean energy um, sort of uh, push that we have around the world at the moment to uh, to produce uh, energy in a clean way. So um, yeah, we've seen the the technical chart pattern for uranium building out nicely. We've broken out through the uh, multi-year downtrend resistance line, which is the solid dash line there, and uh, we've been in um, a, an upwards trending channel, which has been clearly marked by um, um, parallel support and resistance lines with a cyclical behavior really with the um, spot uranium prices surging and dropping and surging and dropping very sort of predictably. And uh, we've just um, dropped down, touched the support line, we've broken out and we've come back to retest the breakout. Um, so when you look, yeah, thank you for zooming in there. You can see, you can see the breakout um, and we've uh, dropped back down. You can see the red candles dropping back down there to um, to retest the uh, or back test the breakout. So from a technical charting point of view, um, the uh, odds favour very strongly um, a, a surge upwards now towards um, I think it's forty dollars or or more, and I think um, we may well see uh, spot uranium prices breaking out of this of this channel, and that will be the really I think when spot uranium prices break out of this channel that's been confining us 
all the way since uh, 2016 or so. Um, so a few years now. Once we break out of that, then um, you know the the, the mining miners' prices will go really crazy. I mean, they've been doing, of course, very very well just recently. But uh, when spot uranium uh, confirms, um, you know what what we all know, I think, then the the miners will just. Um, yeah, it'll be a bonanza time, I think. And of course, the, the stochastic indicator there as well. We've mentioned it a few times, and it, um, if you zoom in on that, you can see that that's showing some some good signs of turning upwards now. Um, mm -hmm. We've seen the stochastic indicator peak; it's pulled back. And of course, in a bull trend, you don't expect the, um, the the stochastic wires to come all the way back down to the zero line on um, on on these sort of longer time frames. So um, you, you expect the, the indicator to stay quite high for a sort of protracted periods of time. So the fact that it's turning now uh, or showing signs of turning is um, really giving me a lot of um, a lot of positive vibes for the for the uh, uranium uh, space. And as part of that, um, you were saying <clears throat> the you were mentioning the miners. Here we have energy fuels. Yeah, so um, we've got the energy fuels uh, share price here, and the stochastic indicator on the weekly chart has bottomed. It's uh, the wires have crossed over. And uh, looking to move upwards now, so that's a bullish uh, indication that we're uh, likely to see a, a beginning of a bullish uptrend. And the uh, the bull flag has built out. We've got some clear horizontal support and resistance levels, which we need to monitor. Obviously, you always have to um, look at the downside as well as the upside. So I think it's around about six dollars sixty or thereabouts um, for the uh, sort of downside support, and uh, eight dollars thirty or, the, or thereabouts for the horizontal upside breakout. And something of a sort of a uh, triangular um, sort of pattern forming there at the moment, with a with a breakout through the through the resistance line there as well. So, a couple of resistance lines. One's broken out. The other one, the red one, uh, still to to uh, to be um, broken above. But uh, with the stochastic indicator where it is, and also the spot uranium price looking to move upwards, even though we've had a really strong up move in uh, in the uranium miners. And I think uh, some are looking for quite a sizable pullback. In, in fact, some analysts are looking for a, a sizable pullback, which, you know, it wouldn't be surprising given given this um, big move that we've seen. And you can see actually looking at the chart that we've got there, the horizontal support and resistance level from previous price action in uh, 2019 would be somewhere around about um, $3, just eyeballing it there, 3 to $3.5. Um, so if we were to see a, a, a large pullback, then we'd, you know, we'd likely see the price come back down and test that horizontal level. Um, but um, weight of evidence probably uh, at the moment um, favours uh, favors a move upwards. I'd say probably something like 60-40 or 70-30 favouring an upside move at this point. And of course, everybody's favourite. Cryptos. <laughs> Cryptos, yeah. We could have picked a number of crypto charts here. Really interesting, actually, to, I should mention at this point that, that Bitcoin is really, really struggling at the moment and it's failing terribly to um, continue its bull market trend. Um, I think 65,000 or thereabouts was the uh, all time highs. And whilst um, other cryptos, including Ethereum here, are um, making new all time highs and um, doing incredibly well, um, Bitcoin is, is failing to join the party. So you know, I suppose it's possible that Bitcoin has peaked already. And, you know, we're going to see um, several weeks of everything else um, going on to to make, uh, you know, huge gains. But I'd be surprised, I, I, you know, I'd be surprised if the crypto market could progress much further without um, Bitcoin uh, confirming. Um, we'll see. We'll see on that, I suppose. I, my expectation is that Bitcoin will um, turn around and uh, and and start its move towards sixty five thousand and much higher highs. And in fact, the Bitcoin chart supports moves to over two hundred thousand dollars from a technical perspective before the bull market is over. It's a four year cycle on Bitcoin, um, and that is likely to um, be reflected across the across the market. Of course, when Bitcoin turns down, then so does the rest of the market. Ethereum uh, is is uh, clearly a very big player in the in the crypto market and is looking. To be completing its bull market cycle here with um, the um, the Ethereum arc, which I first brought to everyone's attention uh, during the period where that green um, sort of circle is on the chart there back in early 2020, and when we broke out and we had the touch point there on the arc, that's when I first um, published the arc on Twitter and uh, said, "Look, you know, 
this is this is looking really bullish. Um, Price is bouncing around at the sort of below two hundred dollars. Um, it's a, it's a good 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 time to get in, and this this arc here is suggesting we're going to climb up to um, to the sort of levels that we're at now. You know, over a thousand dollars. Um, so I, I gave my targets uh, fourteen hundred dollars by um, by February March and got a few people sort of uh, messaging me thinking think I'd completely lost the plot and uh, gone a bit stir crazy or something. But uh, no, you know the, the arc did what what they what they usually do. We hit our targets on time. We now find ourselves in a channel, and this channel is likely to lead us to the to the final ending of this of this bull market. Um, I'd expect price to be contained within the channel as, as we rise up um, through through the through the final stages of the bull market, and quite possibly we break to the upside and break above the top resistance line on the channel um, before prices come come crashing down as the as the bull market ends. So this channel will effectively tell us when to uh, when to exit. Yeah, the, the if I could add there just. What I love about the Ethereum chart is what hap- what's good for Ethereum, uh, a chart price action is good for, for, for any type of instrument. And when you see how well it resolved, like Kevin, he spotted the, the first arc. And when you got that second test there, that first touch point in zone one, that was like, when you see that in a technical, in a, on a chart, on a beautiful arc, uh, multiple tested, Man, it's low risk, high reward. You know, it could fail, but the the odds are that it's going to continue up. And this is a perfect example. And if you look at the entry that arc in 2018, there you see that distance from the 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 apex, the corner of the what do you call that? The is it the apex or the corner of the the start of the arc? Dis- yeah, the the so the distance from the corner of the arc to that top get that that top candle that touches. Look at that distance and scoot over all the way to the right. So that distance in often is a distance out, and that's pretty much where we top, where where that target exited the uh, the arc there out of zone two. You mean? But it's just beautiful. So we have these arcs everywhere. We have them in gold. They resolve. We have them in silver. So that's super super encouraging because when you see that resolve, um, there's a, there's a question that people, there's a question that people often ask is what happens when the arc is complete, <clears throat> and there's no single answer to that because when the arc completes you have to look at the weight of evidence is the cycle over in zone two have we reached the four-year cycle high in zone two well no we haven't you only have to look at the bitcoin cyclical chart to know that the cycle isn't due to end until later this year so in zone two what often typically happens is that we get a handle forming and you see a handle forming on the arc but because we haven't um reached the um end of this bull market cycle then that's not going to happen the handle isn't going to form and we're going to sort of rocket upwards out of this um out of this arc um which you know which does sometimes happen with these with these arc formations it is more common to see some sort of pullback or pause or handle type thing forming but um where we're at with the crypto bull market at the moment that's not the case so kevin how do you how do you uh, come up with that four year um cyclical market for for the cryptos is that just based on you know looking at the the historical charts for bitcoin and ethereum yeah well of course most cryptocurrencies haven't been around for for that sort of period of time you, you you're really sort of having to look at the bitcoin chart because um a lot of cryptocurrencies have only been around for months or at most you know uh, a, a couple of years so uh, but the bitcoin uh, chart is really useful because it does go back uh, through effectively three four-year cycles so we've got two previous cycles to look at um so that's where we're able to draw the conclusion that cryptocurrencies like gold um and also like the dollar i suppose and a lot of markets do have um a four-year cycle embedded within them and um so it's yeah it's curious to note that these cycles are sort of repeated across different markets albeit with different um different timings interesting all right, that's the end of our charts. Gentlemen, why don't you tell us what uh, what we have to look forward to over at uh, northstarbadcharts.com. You guys just started the website. Um, so tell everyone what they can expect from there. Do you want to go Patrick or shall I? <clears throat> whoever whoever would like to take the question. <laughs> okay, well, no, <laughs> so North Star. This is a Charts. team effort. Team effort. Uh, it's a team having. effort. Yeah, it's a team. <laughs> of course it is a team effort, yeah. Um, no, it's great working with Patrick. We've been working together for a while and uh, we've finally sort of got our act together and put the uh, put the website together, northstarbadcharts.com. There's also Patrick with his website, badcharts.com, and I've got northstarcharts.com. 
um, which I'm using to showcase um, my um, charts, which have uh, completed over time to give people an idea of the techniques and uh, how, how all of this stuff works. So they can visit uh, visit that site just to to see what uh, what what you know how how it all works. But no, we're uh, we're putting all these charts on there. We're covering a whole range of markets. We're covering uranium, crypto. We're covering gold, silver, currencies, um, you know, copper, all sorts of different uh, all sorts of different stuff on there. And uh, yeah, what, what do you want to say about it, Patrick? Well, like our time, man, Tom, it, it's crazy. Like um, I, I couldn't re even realize the quantity of charts or the requests that Kevin got. I, I got some, but Ke Kevin, it's off the charts, how many, uh, how many requests he got. And uh, we had to find like an efficient way of, of managing our time also at the, sa at the same time, you know? And uh, yeah, that, that that site, it's clean. We control everything there. Twitter's fun sometimes, like you, you put the hashtags and you could find stuff around. But on the website, I didn't even know it was like a side effect. Uh, we control the categories, control the tags on, on all our charts. So even myself, like I'm dyslexic, I'm all over the place. And then, oh, cool. I could even for me personally, it's easy to find all my charts. Uh, they're, they're not in the folder somewhere on my desktop, on my multiple PCs. Whatever I upload there for, for, for the members, it, I use them myself. So everything's there, easy to track. It's a tag for big picture if you want to see like uh, big picture charts. So no, I think, I I think just, it was uh, one, one thing I was going to say, actually, it, it was important for us that we don't abandon our Twitter followers and also the fact that we, um, you know, we've done our very best to keep the uh, the website at pocket money prices. So, you know, we're, we're hope, hopefully sort of allowing everybody who wants to, to come to our website and uh, and see our work by, you know, keeping the keeping the costs so so low for everybody. Yeah, it's dirt cheap, guys. Come on. With inflation, $10, it's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think, you know, that with probably in excess of 100 charts, maybe even 200 charts uh -huh. per month, um, you know, the, 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 the very small fee is, is um, I think, you know, it's good value for money. And I hope, yeah. I hope the members and people that join um, sort of agree with that. You know, there's a lot of hard work that goes into producing these charts. And anybody who, who produces charts like this will, will, will understand, you know, it's, um, it's a labor of love. We enjoy doing it. You know, it's, it's great for, for people to, to take part and share and, um, and you know, gain and benefit and um, make, make better investing decisions based on, uh, based on the charts not just guesswork, you know? Totally agree, Kev. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's and, and you guys also take requests um, from from the public to to chart things that they would like to see, right? <laughs> well, now you've let the cat out of the bag there because we get, we, we do, I've got to say here, we do literally get hundreds and hundreds of requests. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we have to be, we can only produce maybe four or five charts a day. So it'd probably take us half a lifetime to, to answer everybody's requests. But um, we do our best to monitor the comments and um, chart the key charts and, you know, do, do our best to, to, to sort of um, keep everybody happy. Excellent. Well, gentlemen, anything on your minds as we wrap up here? Any anything that you're looking forward to that that's uh, maybe that you want to mention? I think all I can all I can say at this point is the next few months are going to be really really interesting for for you know investors in precious metals, uranium commodities generally. You know, it could get crazy for a while, but don't get carried away with it. Um, it's not going to last too long, I don't think. Um, late this summer, um, it's, it's it's probably going to turn a little bit you know not very nice, a little bit nasty probably time to step back and just let the dust settle and see what happens. I don't know what you think, Patrick. Well, I have, uh, for me, for silver, Q2, Q4, gold, Q3. But uh, the market often uh, takes more time or less time to digest, like my my uh, my imagined moves. But uh, like Kevin says there, it's uh, there's a huge pricing of that, that monetary imbalances that they did there. The market needs time. People are impatient. And the market, some three months, six months before it starts pricing in, okay, something's happening, you know. Mom and pop, they're coming back home. They're realizing uh, that the food costs more and stuff like that. It takes time, you know. Yeah. And uh, it's just going to be insane, man. People are going to – I don't even think that they're going to they're gonna believe their type of moves we had. The, I think the last time we had the type of moves was of those March lows or maybe like 2010 to 2011. There's some crazy stuff like that. Yeah. So uh, we're prepared this time. We're more mature. We're not going to go crazy with the uh, tweets out to the moon. We're not going to do that. <laughs> but uh, we'll, we're going to keep looking at the charts, back. you know. <laughs> Con consider, considered analysis. That's what it'll be. Scientific yeah. analysis from me. I'm a scientist, you know. That's what I do. <laughs> uh, it's good to rely on the charts to, to tamper the emotion because we have to be emotional. 
And then me, first of all, it's like, uh, it's a constant fight. But at the end of the day, it's the chart that decides where my, where my money goes. Absolutely. Follow the evidence. Excellent. Some sound advice there, guys. Thank you so very much for both of your times today. Thank you, Thank Tom, you for inviting Tom. us. Thanks. It's a pleasure. This podcast is for general informational purposes only. Nothing on this podcast should be taken as investment advice. Guests on this show are not compensated for their appearance. Listeners are urged to educate themselves and make their own decisions. Do not base any investment decisions on the information contained. To view our full disclaimer, please visit our website.